Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda and today's Tuesday, so I am doing a tag. I am doing the booktube watching tag. Disclaimer, this is the second time I've done this video. I did the first one and I went to edit it and I just kept saying a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It was painful to watch. So I'm redoing the whole thing. That's also why like the thumbnail is not going to match what I'm wearing now because I'm not going to redo the thumbnail. But I am going to redo this video and I'm going to try to not say fun so much. Just know that everything's fun. It's all good. But let's go. So I was not tagged, but I was shouted out in Hannah at Savage Reads um, video. Um, she just shouted out a lot of people. Also warning, I am shouting out a lot of YouTubers <laughs> in this and everyone will be mentioned down below as will the prompts to this. So there are 10 prompts. The first one is how many channels are you subscribed to? I am subscribed to 354 the last time I checked. So let's talk about <laughs> that. Obviously, I can't watch 354 channels, all of the videos all the time. So let me go over a little bit how I watch my videos. So um, I have made a playlist. It is not the watch later playlist. I use that for something else. But uh, I call it like today's videos and it's a private playlist. So only I can see it. And um, every day I go through my subscriptions and I just add the videos I want to watch to that playlist. Once they're there, I kind of divide up the videos. So I have like one group of booktubers I subscribe to that either um, I've kind of built a relationship with them and we talk back and forth and, you know, we have, there's a lot of interaction between my channel and their channel and talking, or there may be, there isn't that interaction, but they're a channel that is a great source of recommendations for me. So one of those. We'll just call that, I don't want to call it the A group because I don't want to say people are better than the others, but those are the priority ones. So those get put to the top of that list. And then I sort those from longest to shortest. And then the rest of them, I, sh I sort after that from shortest to longest. I have found, and I've played around with this a lot, I have found that is the most effective way for me to see the most videos. <laughs> So I can't see them all. There's just so many of them. But this this is a great way to help that I can see the most videos and the videos that I most want to see. And it's been working really well since I started doing it. Okay, when do you normally watch BookTube? I normally watch it in the mornings when I am drinking my coffee. I don't think you guys understand how long I can make that coffee last. <laughs> I'll also watch it at various points during the day when I have a free minute or so, I'll come watch a video or something. And lots of times, if I have a day where I have a lot of like housework to do, I'll kind of use my YouTube viewing as sort of a motivation thing. Like I'll watch a video and then I'll go do a task and I'll come back and I'll watch a video and I'll go do a task. Makes things easier. Okay, the next question, how do you balance booktube watching, reading and making your own videos? So, I kind of addressed already how I do the booktube watching. Reading, I have specific times when I try to read. So after lunch, I will read for a bit. When I go pick up my daughter from school, and let me tell you, high school pickups, it's a thing. I have to get there early um, or else I have to go really late and she has to wait for me outside. So I usually get there like half an hour early and then I have half an hour of reading time. So that's nice. And then I read before bed. Beyond that, it's whenever I kind of get a chance to read. Um, but that's a fair amount of reading. I get a lot of reading done. And then for audiobooks, I'll usually do that. Um, actually, audiobooks I like to give my attention to. Um, I'm not someone that can kind of like absorb a lot of audiobook while I'm listening, you know, just listening to it. So audiobooks, I'll like pace for half an hour and listen to some audiobooks. It's, I know it's weird. I'm weird, but there you go. Um, now, making my own videos, I will batch make videos. Um, I try to maximize the days that I wear makeup. <laughs> so um, like today I'm doing several videos. It just, you know, it's just easier that way. And then I don't have a rush of trying to get videos out on a certain day. Um, the only videos that I kind of do kind of in real time is I just started doing five on Friday. So I am doing this video the day I do my first five on Friday, which is October 20th. It will not be posted until much later, I think until the 31st. Um, and then my weekly, my weekly reading update I also do on Fridays and then that comes out on Saturday. But the rest I try to kind of 
schedule them out and batch record them. It just, it saves me time. It's more efficient for me. Okay. Is there a difference between videos you like watching and videos you like making? Um, not really. I will, you know, I do a lot of the sort of common kinds of videos that you see on booktube. I do reviews. I do wrap ups. I do hauls. I do tags. Um, I do TBR slash piles of possibilities. Um, <clears throat> however, the I do I have done vlogs. Um, the one kind of video that I have seen and I enjoy watching, but I have not yet done myself. I don't know when I will do it, although I probably will do it at some time. Are these sort of like discussion like videos where there's an issue and the creator is going to just talk about their thoughts about it? Priscilla at Evening Reader does this quite frequently, and I really enjoy hearing her thoughts. Uh, Laura at Book Lover Laura recently did one that I really appreciated and thought was she did a really great job with. Um, and I like these are usually very um, off the cuff, speaking from the heart sort of thing. So I really enjoy those, even though I haven't done one yet myself. But I probably will at some point. Okay. This is the fifth question, by the way. I don't think I've been saying which question I'm on. Who is the first booktuber you subscribe to and do you still watch them? So I had to think and think and think about this. Like, and I shouldn't have had to think and think and think about this. Like, who was the first booktuber that I subscribed to when I started my channel? I, I, I couldn't figure it out. But then I realized it doesn't say when I started my channel. It just says who's the first book booktuber booktuber <laughs> I started watching. And I'm like, oh, of course, Sue Jackson. Um, because I've been watching Sue Jackson since she started her channel a while ago because I know her through book blogging. And so she talked about starting her booktube channel when she did on her blog. So I saw it there. So I started following her on that. Um, so yeah. And yes, I do still watch her. Um, I tag her a lot. I do, a, you know, she tags me. She's one of those people with whom I have a relationship and we chat with each other and watch each other's videos. So Sue Jackson. Um, who's the most recent booktuber you subscribe to? I'm not entirely sure to be, to tell you the truth. Um, but I, the, I will say the most recent one I remember specifically subscribing to was Reed Becca. Um, so yeah, I would say Reed Becca, although that might not actually be true, but we're going to say her cause I need an answer to that question. <laughs> um, share an old favorite booktuber. So I am going to talk about Caitlin at Bandy's Books. I subscribed to her shortly after I started my channel. Um, and she's one, we have similar, but not exact reading tastes. She tends to read more fantasy than I do. I'm not a huge fantasy reader um, for reasons I have talked about in past videos. I'm not going to get into them. I do try to read some fantasy, but it's just not one of my go-to genres. Um, but we share a lot of taste on like literary fiction. And Caitlin does, um, she does some really fun things on her channel. She'll do like recipes. She's a chef. Recipes inspired by books. Um, so if you like food, go, go check out those recipes. She also does, um, book of the month recommendations and between you and me, um, book of the month needs to hire her to choose the books because she does a better job than book of the month does. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> okay. And share a new favorite booktuber. So I'm going to go with Alex at Frank Fiction, uh, for this one. She and I don't have super similar reading tastes. There's some overlap, but, um, she tends to read more science fiction and more fantasy than I do. And science fiction is actually even a step further for me than um, fantasy, mostly because I'm not a real science-y person. Um, I'm a history person. <laughs> but um, she's so fun to watch. She's very clear, un unlike me. Unlike me, she 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 has clear communication skills. Um, she does really great book reviews. She did a product review that I really appreciated. If I were, it's this thing I've seen around, like if you're an annotator, which I am not, but if you were, it's like this little book buddy thing. And she did a really great review of it, like really thorough. Um, she also once did Bourbon Pong to choose her TBR, which I am 100% behind it. I personally wouldn't do Bourbon Pong because... I don't really like bourbon, but she's Southern. I'm from the Pacific Northwest. So I would do like craft cider pong. I'm all for that too. It might happen. I don't know. Okay. What is one of your booktube pet peeves? Okay. This is it. I'm, I'm going to, the first time I filmed this, I went like overboard on this, but I'm just going to say it. I don't want anyone to get upset with me about this. 
and this is a general YouTube pet peeve, not specifically booktube. Um, I get very nervous watching videos of people filming themselves while they're driving. <laughs> I do. I'm sorry. I'm afraid you're going to get in an accident. There you go. I'm sure you're a good driver. I'm not condemning you. I'm just saying it makes me nervous. I would prefer it if you pulled over. Talk from a parking lot. I've done I've done videos like from parking lots and in my car. That's one thing. But I'm saying you're actually driving. That just makes me a little nervous. Sorry. Okay. And what is what have you learned from watching other booktubers? This is the final like real question. Um, I am not a super tech savvy person. I'm just not that interested in tech to tell you the truth. Um, so I have kind of learned some tech tips from other booktubers. Um, one that I will mention is uh, when I did my booktube newbie tag five months after I started the channel, a little late, I know. Um, Kim at middle of the book March said, suggested, said that she does this. She edits her videos on her phone. I said, that's a good idea. And then I continued uploading my videos, doing them on my computer, danning them over and that's a lot of work. And then um, a while ago, I had done a video. It was a wrap up where I said, you know, I said I wasn't going to do it. And then I did it because I couldn't get the upload to work. Um, and I had done it on my phone. And gosh darn it, Kim was right. It is easier to edit these on your phone. So lately, I have been editing videos on my phone and it has made my life easier. Thank you very much, Kim. Um, there might be times when I might have to do it back on my computer because it's something that I have not learned how to do in iMovie. But lately, I've just found doing them on my phone is a lot easier and saves me time and make it just it's just an easier deal. OK, so the last question is tag some some of your favorite booktubers. I am not tagging anybody. If you'd like to do this, do it. But I do want to shout out some of my favorite booktubers because I think this is a great opportunity to share channels that I think you should check out. So what I did was I went back to my list of the people who get prioritized that that first chunk of, you know, when I do this set up my today's videos thing, that first chunk. Um, I went through my list of those. I took out everyone I have already mentioned in this video. They will be tagged down below. Don't worry, they're still tagged. I took them out and then I did assigned numbers and I did a random number generator and I chose 10 of the remaining priority YouTube channels. I know that's overly complicated. I'm just saying these are 10 channels that I have not already mentioned that I make a point of watching. So let's get through it. First, we have Gemma at Gemma Books. Um, I love her book reviews. She's very opinionated, which I like. I don't always have the same opinion, but the times that we don't agree on something, her she explains her feelings very well, and I really appreciate that. Second, and this is random when I say first, second, that's just like the number they came up. Um, second is Greg at Another Bibliophile Reads. He just has kind of a fun demeanor. Um, it's very deadpan, um, but he, it's fun to watch. And during Garb August, which was a booktube event that I did not participate in, but I enjoyed watching videos about, he had the best Garb August videos. Like the books he read for Garb August, I'm like, where did you even find these? And he'd always show up with a plunger in his hand. I just thought that was really cute. The third one that came up in the um, random number generator is Matt at Bask in the Story. He is one of those who just talks. It's like when you watch you watch his videos, it's like he's sitting across from you and just talking. Um, this is something that I try to do in my videos is not sound... I'm not at all scripted. Like, if you couldn't tell, I'm not scripted. But um, I try to, like, what you see is what you get. And I really feel that is the way it is with him. And um, he's just, you know, great thoughts about what he's reading. He's not afraid to try new things and tell you uh, what he thinks of them. And he's just, it's just fun to watch. I feel like there's, as I said, I feel like he's right there talking to me. Four. Okay, fourth one, I... Uh, number that came up was Roro Reads. So this is strictly book reviews. That's He does just book reviews, but they're quick and to the point, and his points are really thought-provoking. And um, he reads a wide variety of, of things, which is great. Um, he did, he read the entire Booker Longlist, 
which thank you, because that meant I didn't have to. Um, <laughs> he also, in reading the Booker long list and giving his thoughts, uh, convinced me that I'm probably not a Booker girl. <laughs> he was not a fan of most of the books on the Booker long list. So I probably won't read them, but I'll read some. Um, but I really love his thoughts on books. And I love the fact that it's short and to the point it is what it is. And I look forward when I see that he has a new review up, even if it's a book that I have no interest in reading or I have never heard of, I am very interested to hear what he has to think about it. Number five, Jim's books, reading and stuff. So Jim is an Englishman, but he lives in Georgia, not the state, the country. And um, he does one minute reviews, which I am in awe of. Like to do review a book in one minute is fa It's not something I can do clearly. Uh, so when he has like one minute reviews, again, it's like Roro Reads. It's like, I, I'm going to, I'm going to see what this is. Cause I, you know, even if it's not a book I'm interested in or a book that I've even heard of, I want to see how he does it in one minute. Um, and also he lives, as I said, he lives in the country of Georgia and sometimes he'll show pictures of his area or where he travels. And I really appreciate that. I see pictures of places that I have never been to and probably won't ever be to. So that's always fun. Next is Leandra um, at Leandra the TBR Zero. So I came to Leandra through the She Done It podcast, which is a podcast about golden age fiction or golden age mysteries, crime writing. Carolyn Crampton, who's the host, um, interviewed Leandra because Leandra works on that podcast. She's like a production assistant, I think. I'm not quite sure exactly what her job is, but she helps out on that podcast. She does a lot of the research. Um, but in this interview, I, uh, she said, oh, you know, Leandra, you have a booktube channel. Tell us about that. And that was right when I was starting my booktube channel. So of course I went over and looked up Leandra and I've been watching ever since. She's great for getting recommendations of golden age mysteries that you may not have heard of. So everyone's heard of Agatha Christie and she reads Agatha Christie. Um, she loves Agatha Christie as do I. But, you know, we've heard of Agatha Christie and Dorothy L. Sayers and the like. But she will bring up ones that I've never heard of. And then I have to go, like, look them up. Like, American Golden Age. I know very little about the American Golden Age writing. So um, I've gotten some great tips from that. She also reads fantasy, contemporary romance. And I really like her thoughts on them. She is the one, her review on Happy Place was the one that finally convinced me that I don't need to listen to it. <laughs> I had it. I was really waffling on it. And then she gave a very detailed review with spoilers and she did label it as spoilers. And I went into it knowing. And um, the reasons she gave that she had problems with were ones that I would have problems with. So I, I just decided from her, from her excellent review, that that was not a book for me. And I always appreciate that when you save me time. <laughs> Okay. Oh, the next one is a big one. And um, if you don't know of all of Edda Book All, if you will very, very soon or now, I'm not sure when this video is going out. I think this video is going to go out in November. So we will be in nonfiction November. And Olive is a host of nonfiction November. She's been doing it forever. Um, she's um, a very large channel, but she reads, she reads a lot and she does read some fiction, but her focus is really nonfiction. And I love her nonfiction reviews because she she reads nonfiction on pretty much anything. And um, I like, you know, she'll bring up books I've never heard of and give wonderful reviews to let me know if this is something I might want to try or not. So her videos are fantastic. They're very polished. Like she's a pro. She's a pro. Um, highly recommend a book all of, especially if you do nonfiction. Okay, we've got three left. And next I have Nikki at Red Dot Reads. So Nikki is English, but she lives in Singapore, I think, I'm pretty sure. Um, we have very similar reading tastes, but she seems to pull from a different bookshelf than I do a lot. And I think that's because she lives in a different part of the world. Um, so it's I, I get a lot of suggestions from her. Um, I can't always get her suggestions where I am because they aren't released in the United States, but they're at least something for me to keep an eye out for. Um, and then we can always talk about the books that we both have read and have had and read in common. Um, so that's, that's, that's really fun. She also does this thing where she lets her followers like choose one of her books for the month, which is always interesting to see what she comes up as possibilities and to see what other people vote for. So 
Nikki at Red Dot Reads. And I'm down to two. And my penultimate one is Fred at Red by Fred. So Fred and I have very different reading tastes, which is fine, which is fine. I still watch him because I can just tell from his videos that he's like the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> he's so nice. And even though the books that he's talking about are not books that I might read, I still want to hear what he says about it because he's just comforting. He is like a warm cup of coffee, just comforting. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to settle in to watch this. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't have to have, I, I'm happy to watch videos from people who have very different reading tastes than I do, if there's something in there for me. And just that sort of like, we're in this together. I feel like a sense of community watching people like Fred because they are so friendly. And along the same, the same vein, um, my final, my final of the draw was Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading. If Fred is a warm cup of coffee, Kelly is a warm cup of tea. Um, she, she and I have much more similar reading tastes, um, even though she hated the sentence and I love the sentence. And that's just a great example of how books can hit people differently. So it is because you, you know, your experience of a book is half you, half the book. And that's just really interesting to see that. Um, but we do have very similar reading tastes and she's so sweet and so supportive of the booktube community. It's like, you just want to give her a hug. And, um, she does, she does probably a couple videos a week, but she always does a Friday read. So every Friday I look forward to her, um, her Friday reads video. Cause it's just like, oh, it's time to spend, spend a few minutes with Kelly. So those are my 10 randomly selected, but not previously mentioned <laughs> booktubers that I am shouting out. And um, there are a lot I didn't get a chance to shout out. And if I didn't shout you out, it's because the random generator odds were not in your favor. That's all. I've probably shouted you out in other videos. I love you too. Um, so that is the booktube watching tag. I hope I didn't say a lot of fun and fun too many times. I know I caught myself once saying it, at least once. Uh, <laughs> So the prompts will be down below as well as everybody I shouted out will be down below. Please check them all out and um, like, subscribe. Feel free to join my new Discord. It's a great way to have conversations um, with each other, get to know each other a little better. And thank you very much. I will see you in the next video. Bye.